Hello, today I'm going to show you how to design your own logo uh, for your dog business website using a program called GIMP. GIMP is a free program. Uh, you can download it at GIMP.org. It's similar to Photoshop, uh, except uh, Photoshop can be rather expensive. GIMP is, is pretty powerful and it's also free, so it makes it great for, for what we're going to use it for. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to design the logo that I use. Uh, how I designed it on the Dog Business Blogs website. If you look at the background, you can see the the logo is transparent. The background is anyway. Uh, you can you can see behind it. You can see the color that I use on the website. If it wasn't transparent, you would see like a white box that goes around the logo, which would make it pretty unattractive. And I, the first thing I'm going to do is actually pull up this little image of the dog that I have and show you how to make a transparent background to an image in order to use it in a logo. This, uh, this is GIMP here. This is what it looks like when you pull it up. Uh, your project will be in the center. You'll have a toolbox uh, of tools that you use on the left hand side. And then your layers box will be on this side. The first thing we want to do is go to File. We want to go Open as Layers. And you want to find the image uh, that you want to use. In this case, it's the one of the little little dog. Uh, I think I have it on the desktop. Here it is. When you find the image, you just click Open. It takes just a second for some reason. Especially when I'm recording this, it slows me down. If you click layer and go down to transparency and then click on add alpha channel and then the next thing you want to do is come over and I call it a little magic wand uh, GIMP I think calls it the fuzzy selector tool but you click on this little magic wand up in the corner here then you want to start selecting the little white area right through here you know all around the image is what we want to make transparent that way it doesn't show up this little white box in uh, in your logo so what you want to do is click on it you'll see a dotted line come all around it you click delete when you see the checkered boxes that means it's it's a transparent uh, uh, part of the image and you want to go all the way around the little dog selecting all these and hitting delete until you have everything you want to, to be transparent transparent Okay, I want to leave the charm and his eyes white, of course. I don't want them transparent. Uh, so that's pretty much what I want it to look like. If you go to File, we just want to save this image um, so we can open up the logo and start working on it. So you go to File, you go to Save As, and the image is actually a .jpg image. You want to change that extension to .png. Um, that's for transparency. Um, the .jpg image, it, it won't show transparent um, objects. Okay, when you get that finished, you just hit save, or you pick the location that you want to save it to. I'm just going to do it to the desktop in this, in this occasion. Hit save. And uh, you'll have another little box come up with some options in it. Um, normally I just leave that set at the default. Uh, whatever's checked I leave checked and I just hit save again. Uh, when you finish that you can just close out the image of the dog and then go to file and you want to start a new project um, and it's going to come up wanting to know what, what the size of the background you want. I think for that logo I done uh, 397 397 pixels for the width and 60 for the height. You can change this you know, whatever size works well with your website. Just click OK and you'll see the background come up in, in the middle box. Uh, what I do, I go to view and I go to zoom and then zoom in uh, to make that a little larger so I can see what I'm working with. The first thing I want to do is is put the text in in the image. So I just click on the the big black A here. It says Text Tool is the name of it. 
I come over in the corner and you want to make a box uh, to where you want the text to show up at. I think about right there would be correct. Um, it comes up with the text editor tool. This is where you type in what you want it to say. I'm going to do the dog business blog. Over in this corner in the toolbox is a few things you can do. You can change um, the color of the text. You can change the font, the size of it. I'm going to leave it black, but I am going to change the font and the size of it. Um, you have a, a many different fonts to choose from. It. Whatever you have installed on your computer, actually, is what you have in this box. I think the one that I used was called Har Harrington, if I can pronounce it. There it is. It's a type of script, uh, almost looks handwritten. And then I want to up the size, I think. I think it was a, about 30 is what I used, I think. And see how when, when I enlarged it, the text actually came out of this box. You can make this a little larger if you, if you need to. Just grab it and drag it across wherever you want it. Okay. When you get the, the text looking uh, how you want it, you just hit close over here. And you see how that created another layer over here to the right? You have the background and now you have a text layer. What you want to do now is you want to right click on the text layer. You want to come down to duplicate layer and you want to select duplicate layer. And that just makes uh, another text layer exactly the same as the previous one you want to come over to the uh, move tool which it just moves the text around you click on it you come back and select the one that you want to move the layer that you want to move and then you can just use your up and down arrows to uh, actually let me get it selected here you actually want to click on the text to select it not not in the layers because it'll just move you down in, in the layer but just click on the layer use your down arrow to move this down. You see how it separates the two layers? Now you have two. And actually I want to click on the on the first layer if I can select it here and move it up closer to the top. It's actually as far up as I can get it without uh, hiding any of the text. Then I want to change back to the duplicate layer and you want to flip this around that way you get that mirrored look. You can get like a, like a reflection so we're going to do that by going to I think I may have to hunt for a few of these things you may have to be patient with me I can't remember exactly how I did it actually I think you go to layer you go to transform and then flip vertically see how it turns it around and you you can click on it again you can use the move tool again click on it I think mine's actually sitting exactly where I wanted it but if it wasn't if it was sitting down here I would just use the up arrow to bring it up to exactly where I wanted it. That's about right. And then I want to come over to the opacity and it's at a hundred percent. I want to turn that down because I want to give it the, the illusion that it's fading out. I think uh, probably down to about 30 would be a good number on that. It's hard to get it on exactly 30 but 29.7 I think will work. Um, now that you have that done, you want to add the image of the little dog to the logo. So you go to File, you go to this time go to Open as Layers because you want to add it in as a layer. You want to select the image, the PNG image that you have, the transparent background. Go to Open. You see now we have four layers over here, and when the image comes in, the image is much bigger. Uh, than what the logo actually even is so you have to shrink the image you see how how funny it looks here you have to shrink the image so you can use it you want it to be a height of 60 the same as your logo so over here in the layer selection you find the logo image you right click on it you come down to scale layer and th this is actually the size it's 423 width and 498 height what you want to do is change the height 
to 60 because that's how wide your logo is. Uh, the width will actually change itself after you change the height. It, it'll scale it. Just hit scale. See how the image is much smaller now. Except for it's in the middle of our logo, we want to move it. So we select the move tool. We make sure that that image is the one that's uh, outlined. You click in the image and then you just use your right arrow on your keyboard to move it over to where you want it. For some reason, mine's running awful slow, but I'm getting there. Okay, that's about where I want it there. Uh, I've got the logo looking pretty close to what I want it to look like. The, the next thing I want to do, I want to make the whole background transparent because I don't want this white box showing up uh, in my website. So in order to do that you want to click you want to select the background you want to right click on the background come down to add alpha channel just like we did before but this time I don't want to select the fuzzy selector up here the magic wand this time I just want to do that and then I want to hit delete and that makes the background it, it makes the logo look kind of funny here but when you actually um, when you actually save it put it on your website it's going to look uh, correct because you're not going to see all the, the checkered background so now what we want to do is save the logo. You want to go to File, Save As, and the same, uh, the same as we did for the the image of the little dog. We want to save it as a PNG file. So you just want to name it. I'm just going to name mine Logo dot PNG, and I'm also going to save it on the on the desktop. Hit Save. and it's actually going to tell you that, that it has layers basically in, in the image. It says the image should be exported uh, exported before it can be saved as PNG. So what you want to do is export it. Just hit export. I'm really actually not sure what that is but that's what you want to do. Um, and hit save as it gives you the options. I just leave everything as default. Okay, now that we have it saved, you can also actually save it um, as, uh, I'm not sure what the extension is, let me look and see. You can also save it, uh, your project here that you've been working on, in case later on that you want to come back in and change it, uh, you can do that. Let me find the extension for for GIMP. It's XCF right here. If you sa save it as a .xcf, uh, you'll be saving your project, so if you ever want to come back in and change it, say you want to change the font, the size of it, anything, you can come in and do that. If you save it as just a PNG, you won't be able to edit it after after it's saved. So I usually save it as both, which I already have this logo, so I'm not going. I'm going to cancel that out. Um, and over here, you have it. You have your logo. If you click on it, make it a little larger. Well, there it is there's your logo. It's still, you still see the white background basically because the background is white in this image uh, but when you put this on your website if you have blue, red, whatever color you have behind it you'll be able to see it. I'll actually zoom this in a little bit so you can see it but basically that, there, there it is. There, there you have it. Uh, thank you for watching this video.